Hey guys, welcome back. And a lot of new people have signed up and are following and subscribing. Guys, thank you for doing that. Okay. All right. So why are we still waiting on the RV? Why hasn't that happened yet? Well, you know, who's kind of the world cop? Who calls the shots? It's the Trump administration. You know, they're the ones that put the tariffs and sanctions on it. All the countries that don't comply and operate fairly around the world. So what has the U.S. had to have done with the wreck? Well, since the war started in 04, we've literally babysat them because they've had instability and can't work together and have too many differences. So now remember, Iraq's actually, I've shown you two articles now where Iraq's actually been a sovereign nation, guys, since 2004. We, the U.S., we don't govern Iraq. We don't control them. What we do is coach them, support them, and guide them. Okay, they're, they're, they're a sovereign nation. They do their own thing. But because the Trump administration has to babysit them because they fight like cats and dogs, can't get along, can't work together, they don't have stability. That's why the rate hasn't changed. Iraq has to achieve stability. So the two main, and through Iraq's news, they've shown you the two main reasons why the rate hasn't changed. Okay, so basically, kind of from the beginning of the year through April, the number one articles you kept seeing is that yet they had to get a PM and he had to form... The new PM had to get his government form. That was the first layer of stability. The night that Kademi, the new PM, got his cabinet formed, they released a boatload of economic articles right there. They told you Iraq finally achieved one delay, okay, or, or resolved one delay. It was the elections. Then after that, you saw a boatload of articles coming out from between Kurdistan and Baghdad, telling you Kurdistan and Baghdad had to resolve their differences, reach a comprehensive agreement, okay? Guys, those are the delays, okay? Iraq had to resolve their differences, has to be able to work together. That's why the rate hasn't changed. That's what we're waiting on, okay? And then there's a second piece to that. The rate can't just randomly change in the middle of the year or in the middle of any point in the year. The rate has to change. This is what I've been stressing to you guys throughout the entire year because Iraq's told us this. They can only change the rate at the beginning of a new fiscal period. I didn't say fiscal year. I said fiscal period. That means when they have a new operating budget coming into play. Okay, now Iraq's fiscal year does span from April of one year through March of the next. Now, if you notice, the reason why Iraq is talking about doing a 2020 budget right now because October 1st starts the second half of their year. So so the so September ends the first half of their year. September ends the first half of the year. October 1st starts the second half of the year, okay? That's why they're talking about rolling out a new, you know, finally approving and implementing the 2020 budget at the middle of the year. Tet October 1st will be a new fiscal period, okay? That's so the rate that means the rate would actually have to change most likely in late September to accommodate okay the new budget period starting 10 1. All right, so that's that's what you see happening before you. Let's get into this amazing news. Most of you have probably already seen this news, it's from yesterday, but let's let's cover it anyway, and I can give you some quick explanations. All right, so. After his meeting with Kademi yesterday, Habusi directs the parliamentary committees to implement important laws. The Speaker of Parliament, Mohammed Habusi, urged the parliamentary committees to make their best efforts to implement the largest possible number of laws, especially the important ones. House of Representatives, which held its regular session today, now this article is from yesterday, began to review proposals and draft laws that had not been completed in order to begin putting them on its agenda for the purpose of enact enacting them and according to importance. Prime Minister Kademi and Parliament Speaker Habusi held a joint meeting yesterday to discuss the generals, the state's general budget for the year of 2020. In the presence of a number of ministers, deputies, and advisors within the methodology of cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities in order to develop the best means and pillars that served their national economy, according to a statement by Habusi's office. The meeting discussed the draft of the state budget for the year 2020, as it is one of the most important objectives in the ministerial curriculum 
of the government in a manner that guarantees the interest of the citizen and his level of living. The joint meeting also dealt with following up on the latest steps and preparing the economic reform paper, as well as discussing general frameworks for the state budget for next year of 2021. So, guys, that last sentence or last paragraph was actually kind of important. It talks about the economic reform paper is what they discussed as well as the 2020 budget. Okay, here's here's the simple part of that. Iraq did not approve a 2020 budget this year. And it's very simply because they, one thing I've told you guys this entire year is that the rate change is married to the budget because it has things in it like reforms. Reforms are post-rate change, okay? And the reforms have to be funded. Not all of them, some, okay? Some have to be funded, okay? And they're not going to be funded until the rate changes, all right? So that's why the rate change is married to the budget. But now that they're bringing forth a budget, and it, which has post-rate change items in it, like reforms, that would tell you they're also ready to change the rate, and the rate change comes with the budget. That's why they're now ready to bring forth, okay, a, the original 2020 budget mid-year, okay, new fiscal period, all right? Just goes to show you they're ready to change rate. That's why, that's why Iraq did everything they did on August twentieth. Because remember, guys, remember I showed you those August twentieth, uh, back on August twentieth when Iraq was here in the U.S. They didn't come here to meet with Trump. They could have done that over video meetings. They came here to draft contracts with U.S. companies because they're now international. Okay, those contracts have a thirty-day execution period. Okay, that's why. Trump was reconsidering, like I showed you, putting the um, sanctions back on the country of Iran on September 30th. Hear me carefully, because the contracts have a 30-day execution period from 820. Trump wants to put sanctions back on Iran on September 20th so that Iran cannot get a piece of Iraq's financial pie. Okay, hope you heard that. All right, a member of parliament resolves the controversy over including a decision in the 2020, 2021 budget for borrowing. Guys, I'm not going to read this article to you. It, here's the deal on the borrowing. So over the, I think it was probably Saturday, maybe Sunday, but basically Iraq said, oh, yeah, we're not going to borrow any more money past the end of the year. And now, and then another article, it's this one right here. It says that it's going to allow them to actually borrow past the year of, or borrow into the year of 2021. Guys, don't worry about these articles. They're all BS. Yes, they will be borrowing into 2021, and let me explain why. Right now, oil prices are too low. Okay, back on when Iraq was here on August 20th, they had to borrow money. Okay, they they borrowed quite a few billion. Part of what they borrowed was $1.2 billion. To work with GE to get to to use that money, okay, to re um for GE to come in and upgrade Iraq's, Iraq's uh, power electrical grid, okay. So they're gonna borrow money up until the tw they'll borrow money up until the 20, 2021 budget, and that fiscal year will start in in April of next year, okay. So they're gonna borrow money clear up until oil prices have recovered. To where they need to be to properly fund the budget okay it's that simple so we don't care about all these articles don't worry about the borrowing it doesn't mean anything they just they just have to borrow money until price oil prices can cover and fund these reforms okay that's why we don't care about this article it doesn't mean anything and plus they're going to implement the reforms actually in phases okay so what that's why hold on wait 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 let me see if I, there might have been one was it this one? One of these articles, you guys, what I was going to tell you is I didn't know if it was this article or the next one. Um, oh, you know what, guys? Actually, let me, hold on. I apologize. I, I walked past this article. It had, okay, let's go through this real quick. It's got some key things in it. It says, a member of parliament resolves the controversy over including a decision in the 2021 budget for borrowing. 
Uh, the 2021 draft budget does not include a legal text that allows the government to borrow internally or externally. Cougar said in an interview, the inclusion of external and internal borrowing in the draft budget law for 2020 came as a result of financial crisis in the country is going through. Uh, oil prices have begun to recover globally as well as the government's control over revenues of many outlets. He added the draft federal budget for the country the year of 2021 does, does not need the decision for internal external borrowing because it will cripple the Iraqi economy and add more difficult situations to fulfill these loans. So as you guys see right here, they're telling you the 2021 uh, budget does not need borrowing. And that's, again, that's because, and they're telling you exactly what I did. That's when oil prices will have recovered. But keep in mind, the 2021 budget would, does not start in January. It starts when their fiscal year does of April. That's approximately six months out. Okay. So six months gives oil prices plenty of opportunity to recover somewhere around the 55 to $60 range of, for Brent oil. And the decision of the finance committee, uh, Al Safar, was likely on Sunday that the 2020 budget will re reach the House of Representatives in the middle of the month. So somewhere around September 15th, okay, that's when it'll reach Parliament and it needs two weeks to pass. So Parliament needs two weeks to get it approved around, and they should receive it around the middle of the month. The, uh, the 2020 budget arrived at the Council of Ministers four days ago and needs a period to discuss it and then vote on it. And then after that, it'll be sent to the House of Representatives. So that's so anyway, that's uh, the Parliament, which is the House of Representatives, should be, receive it around the middle of the month. Okay. And then actually in the last paragraph, it says, perhaps in the middle of the, yeah, in the middle of September, the budget will arrive to Parliament and within two weeks, vote on it and complete it. So they're telling you they're trying to get the budget done and fully approved. Okay. By the end of September to have it ready to go again for October 1st, which starts the second half of their fiscal year. Kurdistan Democratic Party, the coming period will witness the solution of all problems between Baghdad and Erbil. Guys, we're not going to read this. This is what I've just told you. This is what I've been telling you for quite a while now that Iraq has to achieve stability. This is a requirement by the Trump administration because they've babysat Iraq. They're not going to allow Iraq to go international, which also does include changing their rate until they have full stability and can work together it's that simple if they could because if they can't work together and they were allowed to go international guys they wouldn't be able to get anything done and and then the trump administration would have to babysit them even more so that's why the the trump administration is going to require them to have the stability be able to work together once they've accomplished those steps then they can go international and change their rate okay we're not going to read all this this article just goes to show you that they, I mean, we can look at the first paragraph. It says, uh, in the coming period, we'll witness solution and outstanding of all problems between Baghdad and Erbil. Okay? So that's good. That's what we want to see is see them reach an agreement, a comprehensive agreement. Deputy sets a date for Parliament to receive the 2020 budget. So there I'm, hold on, I'm just looking through it. Uh, House of Representatives, it's about the 2021 budget. So they're saying House of Representatives next week will be sent. Okay, wait. Okay, the 2020 budget will be sent to the Council of Ministers. We'll, the Council of Ministers will, will, send, will send it to the House of Representatives next week. Okay, but the first article I showed you by mid, kind of by mid-September. So be careful with dates. That's where they lie to you the most when they actually give you dates. Okay, so let's just say kind of by the middle of the month to play it safe. Okay, and then the, now this is, this. let's look at this next paragraph at the top of the screen right here. He added the House of Representatives will vote quickly to the federal, to the 2020 budget as it is preparing to receive the 21 budget, indicating that the 21 budget will include operational and investment parts and will be different from previous budgets. That's, guys, because it has, remember, they're going to implement the reforms in stages. The 2021 budget will have oil prices high enough okay for to to implement and fund social reforms which is like article 140 
and HCL. So that doesn't delay the rate change. The rate, the rate change is still on track to most likely happen this month in September. This is just simply telling you these social reforms will be funded from the 21 budget. Okay. That does not delay the rate change. Parliamentary finance. Sending the current year's budget to Parliament is a preemptive step to obtain a new borrowing law. Guys, we already talked about this at the beginning. I don't give a rip about these borrowing laws. And I don't care if, if they say this year or next year. Remember, they're telling you kind of this year or next year to play games with you because they're they're not going to come out right now and telling you how Iraq's fiscal year spans. They're They're kind of playing mind games with you Okay, to make you think the rate's not going to change soon or or to make you think the rate might not even change next year when by telling you they still have to borrow money going into next year. Again, that's that's because of the spanning or timing of their fiscal year. Okay, and they, they I showed you an article where they just told you that until oil prices have stabilized and are are priced correctly, okay, that they have to borrow clear up until that point. But again, that point would be clear up until at least, you know, around the very, around the start of April of next year. So that's actually six months out. So six months gives this thing plenty of time for oil prices to recover. Somewhere are probably close to $60 a barrel, again, Brent oil. And then they, they won't have to borrow because as you just saw in the previous article, that will allow the 21 budget to be different. It has more money in it. Okay, so we don't care about these borrowing laws. Just just tell yourself in your mind, yes, they have to borrow money through through at least you know the end of March of next year. Okay, to fund the 2020 budget to cover their operating expenses and so forth. Well, actually, really more to fund some very important things as far as reforms go too. Like I said, they had to borrow or kind of finance and get a loan for two or 1.2 billion dollars. Okay, for GE to fund, to do electrical work and and fund that reform. Okay, now they fund it. They got loans for that back around August twentieth. So we do not care about. All right, that's it, guys. So as you see, Iraq is doing very good. They're on track. Um, and you guys had to see. I put some nice faith stuff together for you on Sunday, and I do that on purpose, guys, because there's a very strong layer of faith in this and. With that said, what I look for is I look for like a pattern alignment between both faith and facts. And from what I've showed you, that we've got that at the highest level right now. You had some amazing profits really bringing out uh, September financial booms for you. A couple other ones said, hey, they talked about, you know, kind of these financial booms happening during at the point of the Hebrew New Year. And again, this this isn't my opinion, guys, and I'm not, I'm not, I'll just put my disclaimer in this video should be not be used for financial advice. This video is my opinion, again, not to be used for financial advice there. But as these prophets showed you, they made it clear to you that, you know, the financial boom occurs, okay, on, on the Hebrew New Year, which is Rosh Hashanah. That's September 20th. Well, didn't Iraq sign those, uh, you know, those uh, international agreements with U.S. companies totaling $8 billion on August 20th, which I told you has a... 30-day execution period so contracts international contracts signed on august 20th have 30-day execution periods which require a rate change and and then these christian prophets come out saying oh yeah um as of uh you know financial booms on rosh hashanah which is around september 20th guys that's why i bring you both faith and facts to show you patterns and alignments because there's very important uh, pieces to both. Each one's a different piece to the puzzle, but look at how amazing they came together. Hey, God bless you guys. Have a great day. Take care.